we released a song and but that like i'm yeah man like the process is going to be different for every single song yeah and it's kind of like you have to listen to what what is the song giving you yeah so while you were talking about that mm -hmm. i was like <laughs> this is the perfect guy to share my absolutely insane idea for a project with oh okay what you is ready? it? Yeah, cardboard this is pianos. Like my, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no polyester. Okay. Um, so I've had this idea um, of doing like sampling sounds from around the world, mm -hmm. but in I'm talking like the riskiest of situations. What do you mean? <laughs> like, okay, I'm gonna sound nuts when I first okay. say this, but we like, need bulletproof jackets. That's no, the first. Like that. I want to like go to like the front in Ukraine and find a singer. Uh, there has what? to be some soldier that's a singer. Because listen to this. You can't tell me that that guy is not going to sing different, the guy that's about to go into battle, than the person sitting in the booth at home. That's true. That guy's singing like it might be his last song. Dude, you're right. Bro, go into, sneaking into Tibet and China where you're not allowed to go and getting harmonies from the monks, man. You're sneaking this past the Chinese government to get this project done. I'm talking like... Shells going off in Afghanistan are like the snares. Okay, I am so down. I, no, I'm talk like I want a tiger about to maul a wildebeest sampled on okay. this, and I'm gonna put it on the MIDI keyboard and play that. I'm gonna find the key that that shits in. Cause man, Dude, if you live, if you live, <laughs> if you get out of jail from, from breaking in, oh, I'm I'm gonna come back from this project with like long hair, disheveled skin, of a long beard. Look like if Rick Rubin got on crack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you forgot why you even got into it. Like, yeah, it's like, the game. <laughs> like dude, my family has this... long disowned me. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you won't. Have... These samples are the best samples you'll ever hear. But man, it's like, I don't think you can tell me that that person who is playing guitar in like Nepal for pennies is going to play the same as a guy playing a session in this studio. That person's playing like they're not going to eat if they don't get these like mm. tips. Yeah, I want I a sound that. that's combining all of those, you know. Sheesh. And may, finding a way, obviously, to make it look good. I'm not just going <laughs> to throw in a random guy screaming in war, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're dodging shells like mortars. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, he actually dies while yeah, he's singing. Something You're like, like yeah, that. that. That was really close. That'd be a verse that nobody else has gotten. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And you don't have to, like, you don't have to pay him. Oh, my no, gosh. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Dang, I, that actually th that's next level. Yeah. You know? But that's that's like like, like so passionate about yeah. getting the right samples. Man, like get a rap verse by one of those like Mexican drug lord like guys, mm. you know, like I bet there's some of the guys in those drug gangs out in Mexico that are rappers. Mm. Get oh, them yeah. doing a verse like somebody that's a real like real really in that shit i bet he raps different than the guy that's coming from the suburbs yeah i agree but i mean so that's that's the beauty of um like international sound sound is that See, i want to know be... how you get tapped into that you ha you're starting you do a good bit of that right yeah i mean i'd love to learn about that a little bit and uh a lot of it just stems from those people reaching out to me Really? And them finding you. Yeah, I think that like that's something that I've I've heard and I didn't really like, understand mm -hmm. is that like if you are really good at what like if you just put your head down and focus on what you can do and get really good at that, like you you sometimes you feel like oh why aren't why aren't people like responding to this? Mm -hmm. It just sometimes it means you're not good enough. Mm. Like it it really just means that you need a get even better at what you're Work doing harder. to create a tension that you don't even need to like the relationships just kind of happen yeah like you didn't even have to try you didn't have to send them the flash drive like yeah. you didn't have to do that like that does work that like, can but what really works is that those people that you've always wanted to work with finding you oh my gosh and, and so like it's it's luck at a lot of it's luck um, but it also is about being so consistent with what you do and getting better and better at that. Cause I was, I had this, um, time of, uh, where I was like, okay, I want to do music full time. It was during like right before COVID mm. that January, 2020. And I was like, I got to figure out how to make money off, off of this. Like mm -hmm. I'm not making anything and I'm working with all these artists for free. And it's like, I was even paying artists to sing on my stuff. And it's like, how am I? 
making this isn't working yeah <laughs> you know this isn't sustainable yeah it's not sustainable so i was like well i'm gonna make a youtube channel like everybody else and mm -hmm. and do tutorial videos and stuff like that and so i did like i bought this uh i bought the camera you know a really nice camera really nice lens yeah i think it's just it's like it was top of the line back at back you know 2020 um and i spent three months making 30 videos about five videos a week of me, you know, uh, filming for six hours. Oh, no, no, filming for three hours and then editing for th six hours to try to get the footage looking right and, oh and getting the thumbnails and trying to push myself as much as I could through social media. Mm. I was doing little reels to try to, like, show people a little um, summary of the video so they can watch it, like, get people to watch it. Dude, I would still be only getting, like... 100 views or mm -hmm. like 150 or stuff like like that and i was i did that for three months and yeah that's not that long to do it mm -hmm. for but i realized that i wasn't even making music like i was sitting, yeah. <laughs> sitting all this entire time You're just editing it. videos and learning like the editing software and the video like how to like with the isos and this it actually a lot of it is beneficial now because mm -hmm. i'm i'm i do think i'm good enough yeah where now i can document the uh, the sessions and stuff mm -hmm. like that and now i can act, make a product out of it yeah but before man like i didn't realize i just wasn't good enough to even have that takeoff yeah and so i think that there's a a difference between like real like just knowing where you're at mm -hmm. in your pro like in the journey like don't expect people just be wanting to work with you when you haven't got your stuff to that point yeah like to that level so like those doors will open when when they're they actually see the value in in mm -hmm. you and and you can seek it you can spend a long time trying to find those people that will actually want to work with you mm -hmm. and, and that are good enough to like you actually make something really great like but in a lot of a lot of times like i just focus on me Mm. I focus on what I'm doing, my my own sound, my own music, my I do a lot of remixes and stuff like mm -hmm. that and then people reach out to me and and I get these opportunities and I'm not pulling my hair trying to figure out if this person like I'm not wondering what my next like I'm I'm I I mean yes you you're there, there's the element of like where, where where's the next client coming from mm -hmm. but it isn't like um like I'm so st I'm starving that I'm like reaching out to everyone to to oh, like wow. try to get a like, hey you you need um music like I I'll give you a deal I'll give you a yeah. deal it's like I'm not I don't want to be the deal guy. See I'm stuck at that point right now because if I'm giving a deal to everyone they're only gonna want to work with me when you do the deal. when I do the deal and and they're it's almost like I'm devaluing what I mm -hmm. I'm bringing to the table my brand and yeah. so I want to just be like. I'll only do the deal with someone who I actually have experience with that that has paid me full price yeah. before, and I know that okay, we're going through recession. We got this bubble, the bank bubble, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, at, people are struggling, and yeah. so you have to like. Last year was one of the hardest years for me as a, a producer. I actually yeah. had to get like a a part time job to try to make ends meet because mm -hmm. I re was realizing that no one was. I, I mean, people were reaching out, but they were broke. Yeah, and so I was like, I usually charged way more than what they were asking, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, if I just do it for this much, then they're gonna expect this constantly, and I'm like, they they want to even do like a buyout for much less, and I'll mm -hmm. I'll rarely even do a buyout beat. Like I'll mm -hmm. my buyout beat my prices for buyout. If you want to buy out the royalties, and I'm not being involved at the back end, is way more. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people can't afford those bigger prices. And I, yeah. there are just certain things I'm not willing. I got to stay strong to my, my brand. And, mm -hmm. and if that means getting a part-time job, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Cause I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice the, I'm, cause if I say, if, let's just say I, I, I bite on that project, the $600 project or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm spending all that time working on this, this, this song that's going to like maybe get me that month's worth of rent whatever mm -hmm. you know like i do think that there are some certain things that you should be like okay i at, at least i'm 
eating like mm-hmm. at my my rent is paid and, and bro, it's, it's it's gotten to that point recently for me you mm. know times where i'm like bro i'm i have no money in my bank account and i'm actually hungry yeah like not hungry <laughs> for work and the like oh let's hustle type it's yeah like, bro my belly hurts I yeah want more food. Oh, no. and i'm like i'm like fuck man is like, there's like part of it is is actually um having enough money saved up so that way mm-hmm. you're not in that scarcity mode where you're just t- willing to take anything. Yeah. Because that's when you, gotta be huge. Because when you are just taking anything, you're sacrificing on the bigger picture mm. in a sense. Because you're now spending that quality time that you could be working on yourself, working on your brand or finding it with that client finding you or working on another piece of content or a different song that actually gets that that uh, attention mm-hmm. that would get you that high paying client. You're spending that on a low-paying client who, let's just be honest, any person who's trying to get a deal on a song, more likely than not, are not going like, to have that much of a promotion it. plan. They're not, like, it takes you a lot of money to even promote a song. Like, yeah. Um, I have definitely found that um, the ones where I negotiate a deal mm-hmm. are the ones that don't get dropped. Like, that's the one that gets cut from the project usually. Yeah, so um, like, which is so frustrating because oh you just God. you just bent you just bent over trying to give this person what they asked for, and they gave you half of what you thought you're worth. So like, you're not creating a great relationship there. Yeah, you want to create a relationship that you guys both feel like you're winning. Mm-hmm. But I'm always gonna try to add a little bit extra. Like, you're you might send me a vocal or something like that, and. A lot, and, and, and even a lot of the times, like this is how I got some of some of my main my my higher paying clients is that they'll send me a vocal. I'll just ask them, just send me whatever. This is before we signed anything. Mm-hmm. This is just like us talking. Just send me something. And so hours later, and I I I have such a fast workflow mm-hmm. that I can make like a out if you just send me a vocal, I can make the whole thing in like an hour or two. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna make it sound really good, or at least, or at least thirty seconds of it. And I'm only gonna send you thirty seconds. Oh yeah. Of this like really fleshed out idea. And it's like they want to hear the as rest. As soon so as bad. I send that to them, they're like, "Here's my money, dude." Yeah. Like that's it. They. It's almost like they get a taste of the product before they even buy it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to do that, but I hate like for the most part, I just kind of let my what I've done, like posts and stuff like that, speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. And th- like I've even got like this guy in Morocco. I, I, I was working with this. Uh, he reached out to me. He was a manager for some artists and I actually ended up getting uh, the song that I made for him uh, signed mm-hmm. in Morocco uh, for, for one of their artists. Um, but he the, the way that our relationship started is that there's just like, oh, no, I'll pay you half up front, and then I'll wait for this, and then how do I know you're not going to steal this and whatever? Mm-hmm. It's like this kind of like uneasy energy. Everyone, it's how and it I just say is. like, it's not in my best interest to steal your money. Yeah. You can ruin my reputation. You yeah. can tell all the people. It's this business is I will not be able to sustain my business screwing you over. Yeah. And then after that, they're just like, here's all the money. Yeah. And I'm like, thank God, because I, I spent so many years – haggling and I'll just do a hundred dollars up front and yeah. then you can pay me in six increments and whatever it's like <laughs> six installments yeah. of seven nine nine <laughs> yeah seriously and it's like when am I, when am I gonna get the next p- paycheck like yeah. I hate having to ask for my money that's and and so I just say I'm like you know what it's just up front you sign the contract we get it all handled I'm not having to we're not talking about money after this when do you think your work started speaking for itself to the point that you were able to do that though because I think that's not a point that everyone can jump mm-hmm. in at, you know. Yeah, like, that's true. I recently like made the switch from having a part time job and producing to like producing and engineering full time. Mm. But with that comes like I kind of do. I I don't have as much projects out, and mm. like that's definitely a struggling point in negotiations yeah. for me right now. Is like I can show you, I'll do it in front of you. Mm. I'll even send you a mix of someone unreleased. But like, I'm not at the point where my work speaks for itself to the point. Mm. that I can hold that ground. Yeah. You know? Or maybe you could tell me I'm wrong for thinking that. I have that, to hear it. I have to hear it. Um, you know. It, it, there is a um, – one, it's <clears throat> it's about how you sell it. Okay. Okay. Because it's all about – it's really about how confident you are mm-hmm. with that artist. If you can 
full fledged like I've even created uh, relationships with artists that end up paying me my full price without hearing any of my stuff. Five minute conversation, they just sense it. They I can, love those they people. Feel it. <laughs> they just feel it. This yeah. is someone I can trust, mm-hmm. and I mean I trust myself and i'm like dude i'm going to deliver i really am believe me (laughs) and and like that's the thing is i think that i have such a a inner belief that what i'm going to do is is going to be the best fit for that artist Mm -hmm. that that sometimes speaks for itself that you don't even have to hear the music yeah so i think it's believing in your music is is the one of the biggest parts i only got to that point recently i can Mm -hmm. admit yeah, and then it comes actually to that, like, if you're talking about social media and then mm-hmm. people reaching out to you, that's when you actually have to have, like, something that people are like, whoa, this is next level. This yeah. sounds good. Like, I haven't heard this before. Or, like, who are you? Like, I yeah. wanna, like now they're a fan, mm-hmm. which actually in majority of my um, my clients are just producers mm-hmm. that don't know how to do what I do and that want to – make a song and they don't have the patience to actually learn. Mm-hmm. Sometimes actually they become my students and then yeah. th- they end up hiring me as a producer. Mm. And so I'm now getting paid from all of those fronts with teaching them my, my production skills. So that's actually why I'm also working on a master class. So that mm-hmm. way you can get that personalized experience one-on-one and also get the whole rundown of all the chapters of like yeah. how I make music, I find inspirations, plugins, mm-hmm. all my cheat codes, like techniques, um, layering, you know, mixing and stuff like that. Stuff that how I make, just how I make music, and, mm-hmm. I, and also how I work with artists. Pretty much the, that's such in, a big part. Mm-hmm. And I mean, studio etiquette. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm, you know, really grateful for this place. Like, it's like the little things in relation that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it, it's like it's just being comfortable, mm-hmm. like in this environment. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, exactly. Because I think this can be intimidating to people. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of known as one of the most brutal industries. It's a rabbit's production. I do what I want, you do what you can. You do what you want when you know you're the man. Run it, man, run it, man, run it.